Now we are going to find the centre of pressure of a plane area that is immersed vertically in a fluid. The x-axis is the surface of the fluid and the positive y-axis is pointing vertically down. This means that the area A is in the plane of the x-y axes. Now the pressure at a point in a liquid is proportional to the depth of that point in the liquid. So if we take a point at a depth of y in the liquid, the pressure is proportional to y. In other words, if we double the depth, we double the pressure. If the, if the pressure is proportional to depth y, then the pressure is a constant times y. So I will call that constant w. Now delta A is a small piece of our area A. In the limit, delta A becomes dA. Okay, we make this small piece vanishingly small. But for now, we can assume that the pressure is roughly uniform on this small area delta A. If the pressure is uniform or constant, then since pressure equals the force divided by the area, we can say that the force on this tiny piece of area, delta A, is the pressure on it, which is Wy, multiplied by the area, which is delta A. Okay, this is just an approximate relationship, really, because delta A hasn't been made vanishingly small. But in the limit, as delta A goes towards zero, this relationship becomes exact. Now, to get a total force on A, we have to sum up um, forces on delta A. Okay, so we divide area A up into pieces of area delta A and the force on each piece is given by the constant W times Y times delta A. So Y varies obviously and uh, we, we, we can assume that delta A is constant although it doesn't really matter. So we sum up all those force increments. So uh, to get the precise total force acting on the area we let delta A tend towards zero. So our sigma becomes an integral sign and we're integrating over the entire area. This delta A becomes dA. To get the coordinates of the center of pressure xp comma yp we got to consider the moment of the force on delta A about the x and y axes. So let's get the moment of the force on delta A about the y axis. Well, to get the moment of a force acting on an object, we multiply the magnitude of the force acting on the object by the perpendicular distance of the line of action of that force to this axis. Well, you can see that that perpendicular distance is just the x-coordinate of delta A. Okay, the line of action of the force would be perpendicular to the plane of A. And, uh, yeah, that's going into the screen. So we already know that that's Wy delta A, so we just multiply that by x. Now, if we sum up all these moments over the entire area A, we will have the total moment of the force on A about the y-axis. So summing these quantities, you know, is got by, well, we can show that by the Greek letter sigma. And if we let delta A go to zero, like we did over here, the delta A is replaced with dA. So now we can talk about the total moment of the force, not on delta A, but on the entire area A about OY. So we just stick an integral sign in front of this and we replace delta A with dA. So that's what we get in the limit as delta A tends to zero. Now let's get the moment of the force on delta A about the x-axis. Well, we have the force acting on delta A, same as before, Wy delta A. We multiply that by the perpendicular distance Y. So we have Y times Wy delta A. That's Wy squared delta A. So now we can talk about the total moment on, not delta A, but A, about OX. So delta A becomes dA, in the limit as delta A goes to zero. 
and we replace we um, have to sum these well we okay we start off with sigma but in the limit as delta a goes to z zero our uh, summation sign becomes an integral sign by the way I should have say, said here that this is approximately equals because we are assuming that the force is constant on this piece delta a but of course it isn't um, because delta a we haven't taken the limit as delta a goes to zero so the force will vary a little bit delta a is a small increment of area but not vanishingly small but we are assuming that the force on it is constant so this is just the approximate moment of the force on delta a about ox in this integral um, the force varies with depth okay if the force was constant we don't have to do any integration we could take unit area get the force on unit area and um, multiply that force by the total area but the force actually varies with depth force increases linearly with depth now let's see how to locate the x coordinate of the center of pressure we can think of the center of pressure as the point at which the total force on a acts so we can imagine the total force on a of course which is diffuse we can just imagine it acting at a single point and it's a fact that the moment of that total force on a about say the y-axis is the total moment of the force on a about the y-axis so on the left hand side here we have um, the moment of the total force on a about the y-axis where we imagine the total force on a acting at this point so we multiply the total force on a by the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the total force on a to the y-axis well that's just the x value of the center of pressure and on the right hand side here we have what we calculated earlier the total moment of the force on a about the y-axis so now we have a formula for calculating xp uh, we divide the right hand side by the total force on a which we have up here we integrate over the entire area a w y d a in a similar way we can calculate the y value of the center of pressure this time we divide the total moment of force on a about the x-axis that's the integral of w y squared dA by the total force on a which is integral y w y dA so you can see that the denominators in both of these fractions are the same notice that the w's cancel because w is just a constant is the proportionality constant um, for the relationship between pressure and depth let's see an example we have a rectangle of sides a and b that is immersed vertically in a fluid with one of its edges in the surface as shown here now intuitively we would guess that the center of pressure well is uh, midway along this side of the rectangle but below the geometrical center of the rectangle that's because pressure increases with depth you know if it was at the geometrical center that wouldn't make sense because we'd have um, more pressure on the surface below the point than we would above the point so for the center of pressure we don't really want that so we would expect the center of pressure to be below the geometrical center of this rectangle the geometrical center would be uh, you know the intersection point of intersection of the two diagonals be somewhere here now here's the formulas that we just derived um, the integrals involved here are called surface integrals because we're integrating over a surface and the increments are area increments so we have increments of area dA and uh, that's what we're integrating with respect to in each of these integrals we want to convert these surface integrals into double integrals okay let this be our increment of area dA we could put the point xy at the top left corner of it or we could put it in the center it doesn't matter um, in the limit you know dx well by using the letter d I'm assuming that we've already taken limits 
So maybe it would be best to refer to these increments as delta x. And this one here is delta y. So the area is delta a. So it doesn't matter where we put x, y in the limit as delta x and delta y go to zero. You know, delta a will go to da. And uh, x, y can be actually anywhere in this area, delta a. Anyway, let's assume that we're after taking limits. This is not a very rigorous treatment, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, da, the area here, is got by multiplying the sides of the rectangle, dx by dy. So we'll take our area increments, da, as little rectangles of side dx and dy. So these rectangles have sides that are parallel to the x and y axes. So we want to integrate over the entire area A. So, so the area of the rectangle is capital A. We want to integrate y times dA. Well, that's y times dy dx. dy dx is the area of each area element. Um, to integrate over the entire area A, we have to integrate from x equals 0 to A and from x equals 0 to I'm sorry, x equals 0 to b, and from y equals 0 to a. Okay, the positive y-axis is pointing down. So we will have covered the entire region by working out this double integral. So basically we're summing all of these quantities um, in the entire area, capital A. So that's the denominator of our formulas for the x and y coordinates of the center of pressure. We have to multiply the y value of the point in the area increment by the area of it, which is dA or dy dx, and sum all such quantities over the entire area, capital A. We also need the integral over area A, x, y, dA, that's this integral here. So just like before, we have this double integral. This time it's x, y instead of y. And we also need the integral over a y squared dA. So just like before, we have a double integral um, of y squared dy dx. Now we know how to solve these from previous videos. Let's take the inner integral here. Integrate y with respect to y dy. Um, that gives us a half y squared. Our limits are from 0 to a. If we plug those limits in, we get a half a squared, and we take the outer integral, we have to integrate a half a squared with respect to x from 0 to b. Half a squared is just a constant, because a is a constant. So we get a half a squared times x, and we plug in our limits, so we get a half a squared b when we plug b in for x. We get 0 when we plug 0 in for x. Similarly here, if we take this inner integral, we're integrating x, y with respect to y, so we treat x as a constant. So that constant x stays there, and we get a half xy squared from 0 to a. So we have to plug a in for y, okay, and we get a half xa squared, and we get 0 when we plug 0 in. So now we have to integrate this quantity here with respect to x. So the a squared is a constant. We can take the half a squared out if we want to. If we integrate x with respect to x, we get a half x squared times this half gives a quarter x squared, a squared, and uh, the upper limit is b, we plug b in for x, we get a quarter of b squared a squared. We get 0 for the other limit. Finally, for this integral we have the integral of y squared with respect to y, that's a third y cubed. If we plug in our limits we get a third a cubed. A third a cubed is just a constant, we have to integrate that with respect to x, so we just multiply it by x, plug b in for x to get a third a cubed b. So now at last we can calculate yp and xp. We see that the y value of the center of pressure is 2 thirds a, and the x value is a half b. So intuitively, we could have got the, um, the x value of the center of pressure by symmetry. You know, I said earlier that the x value is midway between 0 and b. Well, that's a half b. Excuse me, that's the wrong way around. The x value is a half p. The y value is 2 thirds a. And intuitively we knew that the y value of the center of pressure 
was more than a half a. So a half a would be about here. So two thirds a is somewhat below it, somewhere below it. That makes sense because pressure increases with depth. Pressure does not increase with um, horizontal direction. The pressure is the same all the way along this horizontal line. 